Today, you're in the office with Anthony Harris. As a result of the recent coronavirus outbreaks in the area and quarantining, I am working from my home office fabricating face shields for the medical industry. So today, uh, I'll share with you the process and the job saves for creating the face shields uh, you see on the screen now. I'll be using the LS100 Gravigraph laser that's a 40 watt laser to do the fabrication of the face shields. The supply list for fabricating the face shields and screen is going to be one quarter inch acrylic for the headset, uh, polyester acrylic or Lexan sheeting that's five to ten thousandths thick for the shield itself. You'll also need some foam, uh, 3 8 inch foam works nicely to pad the headset and temples for the wearer's comfort and some rubber bands or elastic cord for people who have smaller heads or need the headsets to be held in place more uh, positively. The laser that I have available in my office to use today is an LS100 40 watt CO2 laser with a marking area that's 12 by 18 inches. Because I am somewhat limited in the work area that I have, I've confined my uh, production to sets of four headsets and one lens at a time for today. The headsets take a little more than five minutes each to run. The head screens take about 25 seconds. Someone with a larger laser or a laser with higher wattage certainly could improve on the production rates that I have in this video. So I'm going to select the headsets and set my engraving parameters. Uh, I will select on the drop down menu the quarter inch thick acrylic and I have predefined settings for the acrylic. For 40 watt laser I'll be using 100% power, 2.5% speed, and I have a vector cutting DPI setting of 25,000. So I'll go ahead and make those selections. I'll send the job over to the laser and load it into the laser's memory buffer. Next, we'll process the screen that clips onto the headgear. This screen has five holes for mounting and then the perimeter cut. I've also included a straight cut line to even off the sheet of material so that I can then index the roll to the next uh, full sheet and begin the cutting process again. It just makes it more efficient. So again, I'll select the lasering interface. Uh, I have already selected the quarter inch acrylic. My settings for the face mask or the screen are 25% power, 60% speed. Again, I'll be using the 25,000 DPI. The runtime on that you can see is 25 seconds. So I'll go ahead and send that over, load it into the laser's memory buffer. Now both jobs are loaded into the buffer and I can simply index between the two jobs depending on the material that I've loaded into the bed of the laser. And this certainly cuts down on production time as opposed to resending the job over to the laser for each sheet of material being processed. So now we can see the quarter inch acrylic in the laser bed. I've put some little standoffs underneath the sheet of acrylic to space it away from the honeycomb cutting table just so that I don't get heat signature marks from uh, where the beam crosses over the fence. So we started the cutting process. This will be cut in a single pass. Uh, again, this headset will be used multiple times. Uh, the headset can be cleaned uh, and then reused uh, with new uh, screens or new visors over it. So the intent would be that this uh, headset would be used for days or weeks. So we can see that I've sped up the cutting process uh, in the video so that uh, it reduces the runtime of the video. 
but certainly the production speed of the machine would be increased if you were using a 60, 80, 100, or 150 watt gravograph laser. You can see clearly the hooks at the end of the armbands, and those are available to clip a piece of elastic in or a rubber band if you needed a tighter hold uh, for the person that's wearing the headgear. So the cutting process is now finished. The next step will be to remove the headgear from the sheet of acrylic. You can simply just give a little bit of pressure uh, and it pops right out. This design includes a relief cutout in the uh, temple and forehead area so that it's more comfortable for the user. So the next step in the process is that we will cut the polyester sheeting for the face shield. Um, I'll open up the LS100. You can see that I have mounted my roll of uh, polyester sheeting on the front of the laser. And I've just used the air intake vent uh, for the clean air uh, intake of the laser. Uh, to fashion a hanger. Now I'll pull the sheet of acrylic in, I'll place um, a piece of bar stock on the front edge just to hold it down so that the material doesn't pucker as it's coming in the uh, door of the laser. And I'm also going to place a piece of material in the center of the cutout area. Since this uh, sheeting was on a roller, uh, it has a bit of a memory. So uh, the sheet of material will hold it flat as it's being cut so that it doesn't come out of position and get out of focus. So the laser is first going to cut out my five uh, holes in the top that snap onto the headgear. Then it will come back and do the perimeter cut um, of the face screen itself. And this is real time cutting. So this entire process, including cutting the straight line at the edge of the material, to be indexed to the back of the laser next all takes about 25 seconds in this model laser. And you can see that the exhaust system and filtration system is doing a nice job of pulling any smoke and debris right out of the laser uh, to keep odors out of the work environment. Now that the cutting is complete, we can take our headgear and attach um, window foam to it. This came from a local hardware store, uh, comes in a roll, adds a nice touch. It's certainly optional, but from the standpoint of the person wearing this 12 hours a day, multiple days in a row, it alleviates pressure points and makes it more comfortable over time. So in order to uh, affix the shield to the headset, we simply uh, line up the pins and snap them into the holes. These take just a little bit of effort to get to snap in. If you stretch the material a little bit from starting at the center, working your way around each side, then uh, stretching the material a little helps it to snap on. Once they're snapped on, they won't come off easily. Uh, so there's no chance of them coming off while they're being worn, but they do snap back off without much effort when you're ready to change and put a new screen on. So the intent is that you would use one headset and perhaps provide 25 shields to go with that headset. The headset's going to take about six minutes to produce. The 25 shields will take roughly 13 minutes to process. So in um, about 19 to 20 minutes, you would have a nice kit of 25 shields and a headset. You can also affix a rubber band or a piece of elastic from uh, tip to tip of the arms for someone that has uh, perhaps a smaller head or needs for this to be held more securely. Perhaps they're in an emergency room and they're shuffling around. Uh, that certainly is optional. Most wearers, this will be perfectly comfortable without any uh, attachment on the back.